we, 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 we choked. We choked. But please, please, don't get our choke confused with your choke. We choked in week seven, and we're a game and a half behind our division leaders. You choked in the Super Bowl, a place that is not even guaranteed that anybody will ever get back to. So let's get that clear right there. Let's get that clear right there. Our choke is a week seven choke, something that we can get, something we can bounce back from. Now, the model for me all this week has been, we may have lost the battle, but the war goes on. The war goes on. A lot of moves have been made. We hear about the Amari Coopers of the world. We hear about the Saints going after Eli Apple. A lot of rumors of who the Eagles going to pick or who the Eagles might not pick. But let's not, let's not, let's not let that, let's let's not let that be our main focus of the week. That's not the focus of the week for us because as Eagles fans, we need to be conscious and we need to be mindful that we very well could be going into battle with what we have. We could be going into battle as is for the rest of the season, and that don't worry me. That don't worry me because the Washington Redskins. I just look, 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 look. Maybe, maybe a, a, a lot of people have a lot of people have this. A lot of people have this misconstrued. A lot of people have this wrong about the way that I feel and the way that I'm reporting on the Eagles. I feel like we only probably should have one or two losses. We shouldn't have lost to the Carolina Panthers or the Tennessee Titans, which leads me to believe that we are underperforming. We are underachieving. So that falls on us. That doesn't fall on nobody just coming out there and beating us senseless. That ain't happened to us this year. That ain't happened to us in one game this year. Every game we played in was a winnable game. Every game we played in was a winnable game. And I don't fear anybody in the NFC East. I definitely don't fear the Giants. I don't fear the Cowboys. I don't fear the Redskins. I just feel like that those are all teams that we should beat. That we should beat. Those are teams that we should be able to grind out and beat wholeheartedly I feel like that we got two tough games against the Rams and the Saints those are question mark games but everybody else is a game I feel like we should beat and that's just how I feel I feel highly of the talent level on the team I don't know what's going on I don't know what's in the air I don't know what's happening to them listen at the end of the day we might not even be on the buyer's end anymore of the trade deadline. We might be on the seller's end. We might give something up to, to acquire some draft picks for the future. Who knows? We, we probably aren't on the buyer's end. But I would like us to be on the buyer's end simply because we have a window. We have a window. We have an opportunity. We have a franchise quarterback. We're, we're, we are one or two pieces away from figuring it out, from figuring it out. Because once we take over the NFC East... It's only a matter of time before that happens. And it's going to have to happen. Like, I'm glad it's set up like this for the NFC East because these teams are going to have to beat us. They can't keep relying on everybody to beat us because we got five games left with the NFC East. We only played one NFC East opponent. One. We closed out the season against the Redskins. They're going to have to come beat us. They're going to have to do it to us. They're going to have to do it to us. It don't matter who they beat up on. They're going to have to do it to us. It's all going to boil down to who could beat up on who in the division. And I feel like we're well built. We're well equipped to beat up on all three of those teams in the division. All three of those teams in the division. You know what I mean? Like I said, of course we're going to run into the people that's happy we lost. That happens. Of course they're going to be happy we lost. You know, if a move is to be made, I think the move that should be made is simply the move that acquires that talent from Denver. If Denver's ready to let go of... You know, Harris Jr., if they're ready to let go of Thomas, they're really, if they're ready to let go of uh, Emmanuel Sanders, we need to go for that. Because in, in all actuality, um, Patrick Peterson is too expensive. He's the third highest cornerback in the game. The third highest cornerback in the game. Do we really want that on our books? He hasn't had three interceptions in a season in a while. You know, I, I, that, I, got, I, got, I guess his interception rate, interception rate isn't high, but people don't throw near him because of the respect. So that's a win-win with that. I don't know if it was quite three, but I don't know. But I know he don't get a lot of interceptions. You know what I mean? Because people people know who he is on the field. People know who he is on the field. So that wouldn't be a bad pick. You know, we can't just be so anxious for us to make a pick because then if that pick don't work out, then what? Then what? I'm hearing Janoris Jenkins now. I would I would absolutely vomit. I would vomit. I I would vomit. And then, you know, I, I, saw, I saw that on Twitter. Somebody tweeted, uh, one, a, a guy that I follow on Twitter said he would vomit. I second that, bro. We don't need no Janoris Jenkins. We might as well stay with what we got. We might as well stay with what we got. You know what I mean? People are making moves out of desperation. Um, the fact that the Saints picked up Eli Apple, I don't even know what that tells me about the Saints. Maybe they don't believe in the talent. Maybe they're getting thin at cornerback. I don't know. Really not my business. Really not my problem until we go out there and play him. Not my business or my problem until we go out there and play him. 
You know what I mean? We don't worry. We listen, listen. We gotta worry about what we can control, and that's what's going on within our organization. Point blank, period. That's what's going on within the organization. Now, the people that are available that we should go after, we should listen. Even even if we're gonna, even if we want to sign, listen, Legarrette Blunt for a fourth round pick. Legarrette Blunt for a fourth round pick seems very doable. You know what I mean? The Detroit Lions. The, De the Detroit Lions have a running back. I forget the kid's name. They have a young talent that they're very high on. LeGarrette Blunt is really only getting like two yards of carry. Bring LeGarrette Blunt back. Bring LeGarrette Blunt back. Pull Des Bryant up. Bring the underdogs back together. Bring, bring LeGarrette Blunt back. Sign Des Bryant. Sign Des Bryant. We ain't got to waste no draft picks on this. We don't have to waste no draft picks on this. We are legitimately a big running back. Who can who can who who can rush up the middle and grind games out, and probably another clutch catcher away from being back to where we was. Cornerback could be an issue for some, but I feel like cornerback it let us down a lot this year. So if you want to go cornerback too, spend waste a draft pick on a cornerback, sign Des Bryant, get Legarrette back for a fourth round pick, and there you go, and there you go. That solves the problems right there. That solves the problems right there. You know, I mean, it's not an easy road climbing back from where we climbed back from. But I tell you what, if we don't win these next two games, the season is pretty much over. If we lose to the Jaguars, then we lose to the Dallas Cowboys, we might as well call it. Call it. Unless everybody else in the division lose, we might as well call it a rat. We might as well call it a rat. So Doug talking about there's no pressure. I totally disagree with that. The pressure is really on now. There's no margin for error. There's no margin for error. So at the end of the day, it needs to get fixed. If you're going to bring somebody in, bring them in. If you're not going to bring nobody in, nix all the rumors and just say we're going to battle with what we got. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Other people might say we need stuff. I disagree. I disagree. We're going to battle with what we got. I'm cool with that because it looks like in London we're going to battle with what we got. And we got to worry about getting pressure on Blake Bortles. We got to worry about scaring him. We got to worry about bringing a hellacious blitz. We got to worry about pressuring Blake Bortles and stopping that run game. And trying to do and doing what we've been doing offensively, moving the ball and scoring. You know what I mean? That ain't gonna stop. That ain't gonna stop. But if that the more that defense, the more that Jaguars defense stays on the field, the more that they're susceptible to get aired out by Carson Wentz. The season ain't over. The season ain't over. Whether we pick somebody up or not. You know what I mean? Whether we pick somebody up or not. Little hangover, we still in the fight. It's nothing to be worried about. Keep your ears tuned to the wire. Understand what's going on because I, I, I think a move gets made, but if it doesn't, I'm comfortable with going to battle what we got.